I mean, let's face it, this isn't going to come as a surprise to anybody who watches broadcast TV, is it? Hi, it's me again, and there's been some analysis over TV broadcasting about how much of the stuff is repeats, and it talks about the BBC. So I thought we could have a bit of a chat about it, because oh, it's, it's pretty much what I do here, really. Isn't it? Let's have a look. Repeats are dominating much of the BBC's TV schedule, including some reruns shown twice by the same channel on the same night. Analysis by National World Shows. Are you surprised by that? Are you surprised by that? Repeats are dominating much of the BBC's TV schedule. I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. There was the thing over Christmas, wasn't there, where, was it, BBC Two was three quarters repeats over Christmas, and I think BBC One was a third, something like that, when that's when they're supposed to be making special stuff for you as a reward for paying your licence fee all year. You know, Christmas specials and new stuff, because you're off work and you can sit and watch a bit of telly with the family. No, they don't care. They don't care. A snapshot of a week's scheduling across the corporation's four TV channels in late June found most programmes on BBC Two, BBC Three and BBC Four were repeats, with little new for viewers to watch. Well, the BBC Four thing doesn't surprise me, because they have said they're not going to make anything new for BBC Four, and it's going online soon anyway, so I don't think they care. BBC Three, I'm surprised, because they're pushing that, and they're spending a lot of money on that to try and bring the kids back in, so I am surprised at that. And a BBC Two. But BBC Two is mostly just used now to repeat BBC One stuff, isn't it? Our analysis reveals 52% of airtime on BBC Two in the weekend in June 24th was spent broadcasting reruns. So just an average week in an average year, and 52% of the stuff on that TV channel that you pay for with your licence fees, 52% of it was repeats. God, that's a bigger number than I would have thought. I'm not surprised, but it is a bigger number than I would have thought just on an average week. Isn't it you? This rose to a massive 85% and 87% on BBC Three and BBC Four, respectively. So 85% repeats for BBC Three. BBC Three was an online channel. They scrapped it off the telly, kept it online to try and get the kids to stream BBC stuff. And then they thought, no, at great expense, we're going to bring it back and spend fortunes making shows just for BBC Three. 85% of it is repeats. 85%. That is a lot. BBC One did offer a majority of fresh content, with two-thirds of its programming new to the airwaves. Although the channel's daytime schedule in the sampled week contained six long-running BBC shows that were shown every weekday, most of which were repeats. They included Homes Under the Hammer and Bargain Hunt, which also found their way onto the BBC Two schedule with further repeats during the same week's listings. Yeah, that's called getting your money's worth, the BBC, <laughs> getting your money's worth. But fair play, it says here BBC One did offer the majority of fresh content with 66% of its programming new to the airwaves. So credit where credit is due. Now, I always give credit where credit's due. If the BBC do something right, don't happen often. I will give credit where it's due. So fair play to that. I think that's probably about right. You couldn't have 100% new stuff on the telly. It's just unrealistic. Unrealistic. The 66% of his programme are new to the airwaves. I think is fair. Repeats during the day when it's not prime time and most people are at work. I've got no big problem with that. No big problem with that. But, you know, 85% repeats for BBC Three. God, that's a lot. That is a lot. That is way more than I would have thought. Am I surprised at that yet? No. No, of course I'm not. So if you're a TV licence fee payer, ask yourself if your 159 quid a year is being well spent. It doesn't sound like a lot of money to some people, I will accept, but it is a lot of money to some other people you must accept. So all in, the BBC get about 3.2 billion quid a year from TV licence fees. And it's up to you as a licence fee payer to decide if it's good value for money, right? If you get value for money from that. I never felt I got value for money for it, and that's why I don't pay it. And as long as you don't watch anything as it's being broadcast or use BBC iPlayer, you don't have to pay it. You can still watch 90% of the stuff, I reckon, that you'd watch anyway. All the ITV stuff, Channel 4, Channel 5, Sky stuff, Netflix, Disney+, Plus, all that, you can still watch without a TV license. The only thing you're going to miss out is stuff as it's being broadcast or using iPlayer. So taking that into consideration, that you can still watch 90% of the stuff you'd watch anyway, do you believe, whether you... Whether it's a lot of money to you or not, do you believe 159 quid is good value for money for what we've just said there? And if you believe it is, carry on paying. If you don't, all the details you need to help you not pay and everything you need to know, you'll find in the links below in the description. 
So take a look at that, and as always, thanks for watching, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. It keeps you up to date with all the latest from the channel and helps the channel grow. And um, yeah, I guess I'll see you in another video again soon, won't I? Hopefully. Ta-da.